In the ancient city of Jericho, a formidable challenge lay ahead for the young Joshua. Commanded by the Lord to organize a great assembly to destroy the city using sound alone. Yet amidst the colossal walls of Jericho, the Israelites, led by seven priests holding seven sacred ram trumpets, stood firmly in place, and by the order of God, with hearts pounding and hands trembling, their horns pierced the air at once, and emboldened by the Ark of the Covenant, the Israelites raised a mighty shout. And by this divine sound alone, the great walls of Jericho came crashing down at the feet of Joshua, like a rumble in the earth. This ancient religious story and many others like it all point to a divine and transformative nature of sound. How is it that all these unrelated traditions and cultures harmoniously elevate sound to cosmic significance and are able to enlighten us to practices that have measured transformative physical, mental, and spiritual abilities? To answer this question, let us take a look at the birthplace of some of the most influential traditions across humanity, the East. In Eastern tradition and religions, sound holds a profound cosmic and spiritual significance that resonates across various belief systems such as Buddhism, Taoism, and Hinduism. Buddhism has an abundance of different traditions, teachings, and mantras from all over the world, and each practitioner has their own form of higher connection. But across different forms, sound serves the purpose of being able to connect individuals to a higher form and free them from the cycle of dukkha or suffering as a result of lower desire. Each syllable of sacred utterance or mantra produces a frequency to correspond to different aspects of enlightenment, such as Om Mani Padme Hum, which translates to something like homage in the jewel of the lotus. Written in the 8th century, the Tibetan Book of the Dead serves as a Buddhist guide to ease the consciousness of a person into the afterlife. That is the radiance of thine own true nature. Recognize it. From the midst of that radiance, the natural sound of reality. Reverberating like a thousand thunders, simultaneously sounding, will come. That is the natural sound of thine own real self. In this text, death is not silence. Death is the sound of pure reality, with the real self resonating to the tune of vast cosmic radiance. In the Hindu teaching, the same primordial sound of reality is the Om. Not only in death, but in creation itself, the divine vibration of the Om was the force which manifested reality from the formless Brahman. In Hindu real-world practice, sacred songs called bhajans have many benefits from devotion, cosmic harmonizing, transcendence of ego, meditation, spiritual upliftment, and much more. And lastly, instruments and sacred tools are further harnessed in the Taoist practice, where specific pure frequencies are literally viewed as essential to resonating with the natural world and cosmic energies. The use of a singing bowl, for example, assists the individual in reaching a state of deep focus or tranquility and can restore the flow of qi or vital energy throughout the body. The philosophy of Wu Wei, meaning effortless action, is the act of observance or attunement to the subtle rhythms of existence and harmonizing with the Tao as it pervades all things in life and is all things which we experience. Now, let's take a look at the West. Throughout the Abrahamic religions, the Word of God is elevated to primary divine significance. The book of John opens with the verse, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. In the written text, the word, Word, is capitalized to illuminate that the Word itself is literally God, and that the Word is divine and primary to creation. The significance of the Word of God, meaning the text of the Bible, is a constituent element of the Christian doctrine and has formed and manifested the significance of the Word into Western civilization for millennia. The idea of the spoken Word as a divine human tool has extended beyond the Abrahamic religions and even into secularized Western circles such as the legal system, political authority, and academia. In the Middle East, the birthplace of the Abrahamic religions, the followers of the Quran, the sacred text of Islam, believe that the manner of pronunciation known as Tajweed in the Qur is necessary to create a sound pleasing to God 
and through certain breathing patterns, posture, and movement, spiritual perfection can be attained. In the mystical Jewish tradition of the Kabbalah, chanting divine names or verses with a specific intention is believed to elevate consciousness, provide spiritual insights, and elevate oneself to the divine source. Throughout these different religions, communal chanting is valuable, even on the earthly plane, in creating a cohesive community devoted to service and relationship with God. Whether or not you believe the text of the Bible, the Quran, or the Torah are literally true, you cannot deny the real world benefits of using the word towards harmonizing oneself to a specific set of scriptures and texts and to larger communal standards and purpose. But beyond even that, what are the real life implications of these mantras, sounds, words, and instruments? What exactly are all these different cryptic traditions, practices, and beliefs trying to get at as to the greater nature of the cosmos and our place in it? How exactly are these people able to have these feelings of heightened connection to some god or deep spiritual enlightenment? I think a good starting point to try to answer these questions would be the brain, as within the brain exists our personal construction of reality. Our brains are actually scientifically measured to exist across a spectrum of different states or frequencies ranging from delta to gamma waves. Each of these ranges of frequencies serves a different purpose for us, whether we are in a dreaming state or a state of extreme focus. Chanting mantras like the Aum, the Kabbalah, Tajweed, or really any term of devotion to a higher form has shown to activate a theta brain state. This state is caused by the flow and repetition of the motion, breathing, and vibration, which causes neuron synchronization and lets the individual reach a kind of meditative state with access to the subconscious mind. This state provides a heightened creativity and is conducive to altered states of consciousness and relaxation, which can result in a very real feeling of transcendence or oneness with existence similar to that of a psychedelic drug. Credited studies have shown that these chants can improve physical, mental, and emotional health as well as quality of relationships and overall well-being. But what's extremely interesting here is that religious chants of devotion or connection, such as God is peace, actually have an increased capacity to create spiritual experience and altered states of consciousness compared to secular chants such as I am content. By focusing on connecting to a higher source like a god, increased tangible benefits are received by the power of the repeated spoken word. So who is really to say what is happening here? Maybe the chants are actually conducive to some strange force of health and well-being in the universe, or maybe it's some kind of placebo effect. But in any sense, it would be silly to overlook this practice, as it has sprouted up independently in many different cultures all over the world. Maybe those altered states of consciousness coming as a result of vibration in the form of sound and resulting in vibration in the form of brain frequencies are somehow accessing some deeper ground of our cosmic existence. After all, whatever happens in the brain to make these benefits and experiences occur is in the realm of consciousness, which we know absolutely nothing about except for the fact that it may be primary to reality. To expand on this idea of sound, vibration, and frequency as having an intertwined relationship with the nature of consciousness, we should bring into question how there can be such a staggering similarity across Eastern and Western tradition in regards to the divine primary nature of sound in the word. We can obviously trace back both Eastern and Western culture to some common ancestral origin, and it has been discovered through paleoanthropology that we can trace a roughly common origin of all humanity in Africa at that point to as recently as 60,000 years ago by some estimates. This would reason that at some point before the different cultures manifested all over the world, humanity had a more similar culture of language, music, and traditions. So for hundreds of thousands of years, humans were and still are co-evolving alongside language and other ordered forms of sound like music, especially in our brains. So the expression of neural synchronization makes sense in this light and actually provides our brains with the capacity and incentive to expand and use language, music, and sound. 
So this would explain some of the common attraction and similarity across Eastern and Western culture in traditions regarding sound. But this also proves that in cosmic terms, sound actually has the ability to focus and expand the intelligence of the universe and the cosmos itself. These different cultures and manifestations across humanity and history beyond even the East and the West appear to point to certain cosmic truths and revelations. There is evidence that the word Amen and the Om share a common origin as the original pronunciation of the word translated roughly as it is true is Amen with the Om sound, a mirror of the Eastern A-U-M where each letter signifies wakeful, dreamful, and deep sleep. Each of these three letters actually does not require the use of the tongue to pronounce, which makes these more primary sounds from which the rest of the human language can be intelligently formed. This brings us back to the point of intelligence. Across the universe there are infinite different sounds and types of vibration, but ordered sounds which use specific frequencies whether it be sound, light, or brain waves, require the use of intelligence to either perceive or create. So, like a radio station sending waves all over the ground, they mean nothing until something exists with an ordered framework to comprehend it, like a radio. So in this way, consciousness is like many radios popping up all over the cosmos, growing greater and smarter by the use of language and music as an art form and tool of evolution. By creating and using an arrangement of frequencies and vibrations, we are able to harmonize and literally synchronize ourselves to the ongoing creation of existence, which formed us and which we will further carry on. So when you read these ancient texts, hear the chants and music and all its beauty and glory, just know, this is the sound of the awakening of the cosmos. Let there be light. This is the conscious and willful illumination of reality. And by listening very carefully and feeling the vibrations of existence, you may yet hear the cosmos speak to you in the voice of the divine. Thanks for watching this video. Stay tuned for the next two parts of this four part series on sound, vibration, and energy. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more on our cosmic purpose and awakening. As always, never stop questioning, talking, and thinking. Thank you.